Welcome to the first of our RUAE videos. These will take you through the various skills that you require to answer the SQE's reading for understanding, analysis and evaluation papers. Along the way, we'll discuss the differences between higher and national five RUAE so that you understand exactly the level of detail that's required to achieve full marks. This first video is an overview. It will introduce you to the general skills that are required to master RUAE. So what is RUAE? Well, it stands for Reading for Understanding, Analysis and Evaluation. You will also hear it referred to as close reading because it does require reading closely. If you come from a National 5 background, you're already familiar with what RUAE is. If you come from a GCSE background, then the closest equivalent will be your language reading papers. Well, the question formats are slightly different. It's the same core skills that are being used. You're reading an extract and you're answering questions. Now, I can't stress this enough. In order to prepare for RUAE, it is really important that you regularly read the kind of articles that are featured in the exams. This will help you practice your RUAE skills. It will also help you become familiar with the style of the genre, because most of you probably don't read newspaper or magazine articles in your spare time. So it is important that you go out of your way to practice this skill regularly. And your teacher will expect you to be reading at least one article a week throughout the entirety of your National 5 and higher course. So when I talk about appropriate articles, what do I actually mean? Well, obviously, we're looking for prose non-fictions. We're not looking for short stories or novels or any of that kind of stuff. Generally speaking, you're looking at newspaper or magazine articles. But what we don't want is news stories, things that tell you what has happened. Instead, what we want is columns or editorials, articles in which the writer expresses an opinion or an attitude towards something. So again, not an article that tells you something has happened, but an article that tells you what the writer feels or thinks about something that has happened. They obviously should be well written, which means avoid your tabloid newspapers, avoid the metro. Um, they need to have good, rich, varied vocabulary. They need to have varied sentence structure. Uh, they need to have complex ideas in there and they need to come from good quality sources. Now, there's some sort of guidelines included here for you to think about. Broadsheet newspapers are very good source for you to look at, The Guardian, The Observer, The Independent, The Herald and so on. Good quality magazines such as The New Yorker, Time Magazine, New Scientist, The Economist. There are also certain good websites available, but again you have to ex exercise extra discretion when it comes to websites because anybody can publish stuff on the internet, so you need to be careful that it is well written, good quality stuff. But certainly The Byline Times and The Huffington Post both feature good quality uh, writing online. And of course, many of these newspapers and magazines also have websites and you can access a lot of their articles there. I would suggest that the easiest place for you to start is the opinion section of the Guardian website. And I suggest this primarily because it's free. A lot of other newspapers have a paywall where you need to certainly register and perhaps actually pay some money to be able to access their articles, whereas the Guardian's articles are all available online for free and their opinion section is the section that has all of the kind of columns and editorials that make for good articles for RUAE. So if you're struggling to find articles somewhere else, that's a good place to go. You can see the website there, guardian.com forward slash UK forward slash comment is free. So now we know the type of article we're going to be reading. Next, we need to consider what type of question are we going to encounter. So generally speaking, RUE questions will test your ability to understand, to analyse and to evaluate what you have read. But what exactly do those words mean? Well, understanding, at its most basic level, that is asking you what is the writer saying? In other words, we are thinking there about their ideas. Analysis questions are going to be asking you how has the writer conveyed something? And there, we're primarily going to be looking at language. And finally, perhaps most complex of all is the evaluation questions, and those are going to be asking us how well has the author achieved their purpose. And that might consider language, but that also may consider ideas as well. Now, one thing that is worth noting if you come from a GCSE background is when the SQA talk about language, that includes language and structure. While the GCSE exam boards separate out language and structure, the SQA takes the approach that language is the blanket term, the umbrella term that covers all of the language features. So that includes both word choice, sentence structure, uh, imagery, and so on. So we'll do a slightly more detailed breakdown of each of these types of questions. So understanding questions that focus on what is being said, they will focus on the ideas and you will be asked to explain, to summarise or to paraphrase, which means take the ideas and express them using your own words as far as possible. Obviously, 
They basically aren't concerned uh, about assessing whether you understand simple words like table or cat. What they're concerned about is you understanding the idea that the writer has there and the ability to express that using your own words to demonstrate that you do actually understand it. So you're not just lifting uh, words from the passage and hoping that they're the right words. You're actually demonstrating that you understand what it is that you read. And I strongly, strongly encourage you to use bullet points for your answers for understanding questions. These are always worth one mark per idea. So I would encourage you to use one bullet point per idea. So you have a very clear indication of how many distinct points you've made and therefore how many marks you think you're likely to get for your answer. So analysis questions are focused on how the author has conveyed these ideas. We're looking at language features or techniques. Uh, and as I've said before, Language for the SQA covers both language and structure. Okay, you explain the effect or the impact of specific words or phrases, which could be word choice, could be imagery like metaphors or similes, could be repetition, could be parallel structure, could be short sentences, could be questions, could be lists, so on and so forth. Within your answers, it's very important that you quote to identify what bit of the passage you are actually talking about, and then you comment on the effect of what it is that you have quoted. And again, I recommend that you use bullet points. Now, the marks are slightly more complex when it comes to analysis questions. We will go into that in more detail in future videos. But still, nonetheless, I encourage you to use separate bullet points or, or break your answer up, leaving a line between the different parts of your answer so you're very clear how many different language features you have quoted and then commented on, because that gives you a clearer indication of how much you've written and therefore how many marks you are likely to get. OK, now I know you have, we've spent a lot of our time as English teachers telling you to write in long developed paragraphs, and there is a place for that. The critical essay um, and the final answer for the Scottish text are two parts of the exam where you can actually write long extended prose. Your writing folio as well is long extended prose, but when it comes to RUAE, it is really important that you are focused and precise and analytical, and I strongly encourage you to use bullet points for all of your answers. So here we have the final type of question, evaluation questions, which ask you to comment on how well the author has achieved something. Responses to evaluation questions may consider ideas and or language features, depending on what precisely you're being asked to do, and you're explaining why something is or is not effective. It absolutely is possible for you to argue that something is not effective, but only if you have a strong evaluative argument to justify that. It is generally speaking far easier to say that something is effective. There's many, many more things you could say there. And again, in your answers, we would expect you to quote and comment. Now, I should stress at this point, there are far fewer evaluation questions than anything else. The vast majority of marks come from understanding and analysis, and most exam papers only have a single evaluation question. So if you are stumped by evaluation questions, you find them very hard, you don't need to worry too much about them. So this takes me to the golden rule which is read the question. I'm going to say this again, read the question. This is really, really important. It is very easy for candidates to slightly misread a question because you're not paying attention and therefore lose many marks in your RUAE paper. Remember, you're being asked to demonstrate your ability to read and understand. It's not just the passage you're being asked to understand, it's also the questions that you're being asked to understand as well. The questions might point you in a particular section of the text. If you quote from outside that section, your answer is not relevant, you will get zero marks. The question may ask you for the writer's opinion on one particular thing, but in that paragraph they may talk about something else. And if you quote talking about the wrong focus, you will get no marks at all. If you misidentify an understanding question as an analysis question, again, you may find yourself losing marks. So it's really, really important that you read the question carefully and that you understand what you're being asked to do. So I thought it might be useful for us to consider the main differences between higher RUAE and National 5 RUAE, both so that those of you who are coming from National 5 understand the difference and the step up in challenge here, and also so that those of you that are perhaps doing National 5 this year understand what you're doing this year and how that's going to develop next year. So at National 5, there'll be a single passage, there'll be 30 marks of questions on that passage, and there'll be a mixture of understanding, analysis and evaluation. And as I said before, the vast majority of those will be understanding and analysis questions. When you're studying higher, there are two passages. There are 25 marks on passage one, which are a mixture of understanding, analysis and evaluation questions, and again, predominantly understanding and analysis questions. And then the final five marks for higher comes from the final question of the paper. 
in which you're asked to compare passage one and two. And the idea there is to focus on key ideas, areas of agreement or disagreement. Again, the golden rule, read the question, be, be clear whether you're looking for things they agree on or things they disagree on. And then you support those key ideas with evidence. So a final reminder for you then, practice, practice, practice. Your teacher will expect you to regularly read the kind of articles we've talked about in this video in order to practice your RUAE skills and to become familiar with the style of that genre. And again, if you're struggling to find articles, the easiest place to go is the opinion section of the Guardian website, and I've included the web link there for you. Again, guardian.com forward slash UK forward slash comment is free. Remember, these appropriate articles are generally columns or editorials. They must express an opinion or convey an attitude towards something. They should be well written and they should come from good quality sources such as broadsheet newspapers, quality magazines or certain websites. If you are not sure if the source that you are looking at is sufficiently high quality, then the best person to ask is your English teacher and they will give you an evaluative judgment about the quality of the text that you've chosen. So there's our reading for understanding analysis and evaluation overview. There'll be a series of other videos that go into more detail on how you approach specific question types. But remember, the golden rule is always read the question carefully and every question will always be asking you to demonstrate one or more of these key skills, your ability to understand, your ability to analyze and your ability to evaluate. It is very important that you're practicing these skills as often as possible by reading newspaper articles and thinking about the key ideas, practicing summarizing them, identifying language features that the author has used, and so on and so forth. And hopefully in the process of doing that, you'll actually encounter some articles that you quite enjoy reading. Enjoy and good luck.